Goodbye lithium, sodium ion batteries are the future. The race is on. Lithium ion batteries have dominated the energy storage market for years, but now a new challenger has emerged. Sodium ion batteries are making waves in the industry, and we're here to break down the pros and cons of each. Are sodium ion batteries sent to overthrow lithium ion, or will they work together to power our world? Find out in this video. So sodium ion batteries are quickly becoming an alternative to lithium ion batteries. Industrial Industrial leaders in battery production CATL, and Reliance Industries are racing towards making sodium ion batteries more mainstream. The goal is to quickly lead these emerging batteries into mass production. One of the reasons for ditching lithium ion batteries is the increasing prices of the raw material involved in the production of the lithium ion battery cell, and the resulting shortfalls in the materials themselves. When seen in this perspective, sodium ion batteries have a lot to offer. And important point regarding sodium ion batteries is that its mainstream usage will depend on the extent of market investment. The more industrial sectors are willing to adopt this technology, the quicker it will become a substitute for the established lithium ion battery. Newer battery technology could ease up the supply chain stress placed on lithium and other raw materials involved in the production of the battery. In contrast, sodium is more than a thousand times more abundant than lithium. This means that the supply of sodium Sodium, at least in comparison to lithium, will never be an issue since it is infinitely more accessible. Even the extraction and purification costs associated with sodium are very, very low. If we add all these cost benefits, an average sodium ion cell can be estimated to be 30 to 40 percent cheaper as compared to the lithium ion cell. However, the issue is not that the lithium ion cell is hard to replace, but the real problem is boosting the production of sodium ion cell to scale. This could make the manufacturing of both battery types comparable. This means that in the immediate short run, the cost of production of these battery cells will likely be higher since newer designs are very costly to produce. Eventually, with the production numbers soaring, the costs are dividing and the pricing gets competitive. The EV market estimates that the demand for such batteries is very high right now, but most EV companies will not be able to take advantage of the pricing curve since the demand in the shorter run will be too costly to meet using these cells. For the longer run, the EV market can definitely benefit from the newer technology. Sodium ion batteries will be able to replace traditional batteries in the EVs and energy storage by 2030. In the future, it is a safe bet that sodium ion batteries will replace lithium ion batteries, but there are still many uncertainties which need to be ironed out before making some predictions about the battery. At the end of 2021, Reliance Industries have moved towards acquiring a UK-based sodium ion battery producer Faradoin for about $136 million. This is the latest acquisition by Reliance in the field of renewable energy. This is a critical step for the conglomerate to incorporate all the steps and raw materials for integrating all the parts of the new energy ecosystem. This new ecosystem will consist of a new supply chain, batteries, electrolyzer, and fuel cells. The ecosystem comprises everything from textiles to petroleum refining techniques and will construct several gigafactories to that end. Reliance Industries will base all its production on this new energy cell. Reliance will have a unique opportunity to scale the production cycle. But the problem with these sodium ion cells is that it will take time before they can reach a production volume the same as lithium ion cells. The energy requirements of this ecosystem infrastructure could be adequate to scale up the production of these sodium ion batteries. Since Reliance is the largest telecom company in the world. It has the infrastructure to single-handedly bring in to the mainstream. It's interesting to know that Reliance is not the only industry looking to bring sodium ion into that mainstream. We are seeing other companies such as Hina Battery Technology, Neutron Energy, Altris AB, and Amperex Technology LTD, CATL, take up interest in this cutting-edge technology. CATL has also produced its first generation of sodium ion ion battery during the mid of 2021. 
The company aims to launch an industrial offshoot by the end of 2023. In 2021, the Chinese company has stated that it will research and develop the electrode materials in the sodium ion battery cell. The first models of this sodium ion battery can accumulate energy densities of up to 160 WHKG. In its second set of models, it aims to exceed 200 WHKG. However, CATL has not been able to produce a direct answer as to how it will improve the higher energy density. CATL is intending to research anode free metal battery technology. This technology will be implemented into the second generation of sodium ion batteries. However, there has been some progress made since CATL has filed a patent for a sodium metal battery electrochemical device. The device is composed of a metal layer which was used as a negative current collector after its first charging. The unprecedented advantage of this battery is that it does not have an anode. This also means that CATL has not only produced patents, but also has taken the initiative in designing process flowcharts going forward. Faradion has already made huge progress in achieving energy density through innovations in the cathode, anode, and electrolyte. Using the changes incorporated in the materials outlined, it was able to increase the overall capacity of up to 190 WHKG. Efforts are underway to increase the capacity of up to 250 WHKG. HKG. If the sodium ion batteries are able to reach this threshold, then they will be almost comparable to lithium ion batteries in terms of battery capacity. What does all of this mean? Well, all of this eventually means that sodium ion batteries will end up as a supplement to the lithium ion batteries. In the long run, it makes sense to have sodium ion batteries complementing the lithium ion batteries for two reasons. First, the energy density of the sodium ion battery is not currently on on par with the lithium ion battery and can only act to supplement the current energy density of lithium ion batteries. This will give enough time to most renewable energy giants to scale up the production of these new batteries to make the overall production costs cheaper as compared to the older lithium ion batteries. The scaling up of sodium ion batteries will eventually give enough space to these new stakeholders in power management systems to edge out lithium ion cells due to the stresses in the supply line demand. But most companies will use these batteries side by side rather than against each other. CATL and other companies have stated that both of these battery technologies are very much alike in terms of structure as well as working fundamentals. The similarity is so striking that both of these technologies could be used on the same manufacturing lines using the same equipment as with the standard lithium ion battery. If the similarities are so profound, then it makes sense to absorb both of these battery cells into the same energy ecosystem, and that is exactly what CATL is doing. CATL has further said that they have integrated both sodium and lithium ion-based cells in an AB battery system solution, which will be used as a 1EB pack. This EB pack will have the unique advantages of using the chemistries of both these cells to its advantage and will expand on the possible implications for their combined use in the future. The sodium ion battery will work like a supercapacitor for the EV market and will make up the energy density shortfall between both these cells. So I hope you found the video informative. Click to watch our next video and discover the latest advancements in the Model Y.